Hi, I'm indie fantasy author Melinda Cusera, and today we're back with another episode of Fantasy Lore and More. And today we have Samuel Lawson, who's joining me to talk about his book, Earth Protectors. And I already have questions. So, welcome, Samuel. Tell us about Earth Protectors. Hi, right. thank you for having me here on your platform. It's nice being here. All right, about my book, Earth Protectors, it's about a teenager, a young boy of 10 years old. He's always left questioning everything, always bullied at school, and he's weak. But then, suddenly, three new friends arrive at school, and his life is for the better. He discovers his new purpose, and he discovers the truth about his real identity. So with his new friends at his side, he's... Oh, so I said, I said it's about a young boy of 17 years old. So he's weak, bullied, and he's left to question everything. So his life changes when new friends arrive at school and he got to learn about his purpose. So it's to save the world and protect everyone he holds there. So that's basically about the story. That's pretty cool. So what is he protecting the world from? Because that's like a heavy responsibility for, for a teenager. Or is that too much of a spoiler to say what he's protecting the world from? So he's protecting the world against dark forces. He learns that, he learns about his world and he learns about the threats to his world. So he's to save the world and protect those he holds there. Can you say what the dark forces are or is that too much of a spoiler? Uh, Okay. Now, (laughs) it's about his uncle. Okay, there was a power father and then so his uncle is um his uncle is one who is hungry for power at every cost so the uncle comes into this world is into his world sending all forms of creatures like the manticores um vampires and every other mythical beings so he's to protect those he loves he's to protect the earth and protect the earth against his uncle also so that's what it's really about. Oh, that's cool. So it, in your world, what are manticores like? Because like I've heard different descriptions in other fantasy books. I'm just curious, like if, if you took a different spin on it or well manticores are like um in human form. Human form and then it has a face of a woman, then the lion structure of body and that of a goat. So that's what it's really like. So it's like a woman form. It speaks. Yeah, it speaks also. So that's what a mountain is like. Okay. That's cool. That's really neat. Do you want to read an excerpt from Earth Protectors? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to mute myself. So you are, so it, feel free to give any context or anything that um, anyone needs to know oh, so um, for the part. Just take my first chapter. Okay. All right, so my, my life could be summed up in one word with it's rather amusing when you find yourself both popular and bullied simultaneously. No, my popularity didn't stem from good looks or a brownie physique, like typical jokes, if that's what you are thinking. I was the exact opposite. A slightly built 17 years old with oversized glasses that seems perpetually on the brink of sliding off my face. It's not that I wanted to be exceptionally brilliant. I'm not trying to boast. But my intellect felt more like a cause due to the relentless bullying it brought upon me. The saga began when I tried to help Fred in class. We had just returned to school and our history teacher posed a question to him. Nobody in Mrs. Davis' sophomore's history class wanted the spotlight. When Mrs. David started pointing at individual victims, spitting out questions like a drill sergeant, we all sank in our decks. You, backed Miss Davis, pointing at Fred Miller. Yes, one for you. What candidate replaced John Adams? to become third president of the United States. Some of the smartest students were already starting to chuckle, which made, them, which made things worse. Fred looked like he was gonna throw up, 
Come on, Mr. Miller, demanded Miss Davis, third president of the United States. More laughter erupted from everyone in class, especially when Fred said, quantity, Washington. His response was way off the mark, drawing laughter from the entire class. It was evident that he hadn't been playing, paying any attention. To assist him, I decided to whisper the correct answer. Little did I know it would mark the beginning of my torment. Later that day, as the final bell signaled the end of our class, I hurriedly packed my books, hoping to secure a decent spot on the bus. Woman, woman added that if you weren't quick enough, you will be left without a good seat. However, just as I was about to leave the class, two bully boys grabbed me by the arms. The smacks suggesting that I was the prized victim. They were the same guys who sat with Fred at the back. I believe one of them was named James. Well, well, look who's in a hurry, Fred Ned, revealing his gleaming white teeth. Maybe he doesn't want to miss his mama's cooking. I stood a few inches taller than Fred, but I knew I couldn't overpower him. He was muscular, and he had his manners. Who wouldn't hesitate to harm me? His dark eyes darted around as if he couldn't absorb everything at once. Please stop. Take him to the bathroom. <coughs> no, please. I didn't do anything. I cried out, my voice growing out as they dragged me towards the restroom. I didn't see anyone I could call out for help during this study. They dragged me into one of the stores, and James attended, attempted to dunk my head into the toilet bowl. When I resisted, the other boy punched me in the stomach, and soon my, my face was submerged in the toilet water while it was flushed repeatedly. I struggled to breathe. The relentless gush of water make it impossible. To through it all, Fred's malicious laughter echoed behind me. I was still gasping for air when the core game was abruptly interrupted. Who did that? Fred demanded, clenching his head as he scanned the restroom frantically. I guess it's me, blockhead. A voice replied as he figured a man from the store opposite ours. I had managed to call out to witness my savior. It was Simon from the next class. He joined our school two weeks ago. He joined our school two weeks ago and was already recognized as one of the most coolest class in our year. He possessed the athletic build of a basketball team player. Having been the captain of his former school team, there he stood, his signature smack on display holding a can of Coca-Cola. That was when I noticed another can of spilled cola near Fred. Simon must have thrown it to divert the attention from me. What did you just call me, blockhead? Simon's make grew wider, and he replied, are you that dense? I'd heard the rumors, but I didn't believe them until now. Oh, you just crossed the line. When I'm done with you, you won't try that again. That's if you can catch me. Simon taunted with a thing with a sing song tone before dancing out of the class of the restroom. Don't just stand there. Get him. Fred ordered his friends, who had been stupefied by the unfolding event. They rushed out of the restroom and Fred followed them, leaving me with a malevolent gun that conveyed a clear message. This wasn't over. Once I was certain they had left, I heaved myself up dried my hands and face with paper towels and cleaned my glasses. It was a miracle that I didn't fall off during the entire ordeal. Why I didn't smell bad, I couldn't help but think about the experience. Think about my face being submerged in water tainted with bodily fluids. I must, it was a miracle that I didn't fall off during the entire ordeal. While I didn't smell bad, I couldn't help but think about my face, be submerged in water, tinted with bodily fluids. I was almost done when I heard a soft voice calling my name. Tommy, are you okay? I spun around to find the source of the voice. And my heart 
wait, skywalked. It was Sarah from my next class, from the next class, the third most popular girl in the entire school. Though for me, she was number one. She was adored by almost everyone. Abby joined our school just two weeks ago, along with Simon and our best friend, Amanda. A doll like face could bring anyone to the knees. I had a massive crush on her. Hello, she tried again, stare at the doorway. Oh, I realized I had been staring at her for quite a little while. Are you okay? She asked, taking a step further into the restroom. I noticed, I noticed her scrunching her nose as she observed the vulgar graffiti on the wall. What has she expected? Flowers and pig decor? You shouldn't be here. I have yelled. My voice out from screaming earlier. Where to go, Tom? Your dream girl decides to talk to you after days of admiring her from afar. And this is how you respond. I mentally face palmed myself at my outburst, but it was entirely my fault. No guy would want a girl to talk to him, especially after his head had been dunked in the toilet. Sarah didn't say anything, just stared at me with a curious look, like a cat studying his pee. After an awkward silence, during which I shuffled my feet in a futile attempt to appear composed, she finally asked, Tommy, why? Huh? Why shouldn't I be here? She leaned against the wall, pushing up the sleeve of her baby pink cardigan. Because you are in the boys' bathroom, I explained, thinking it was bontantly obvious. Yeah, so what? Boys invite girls here all the time, if you know what I mean. She flashed a coin smile. Oh, I felt my cheek eat up, so I stared at my shoes to hide my face. Why didn't you fight back? She asked softly, a voice drawing closer. Still staring at my shoes, I replied. I can't. How do you know about it anyway? A intense gaze bored into me. We were listening. A new voice chimed in. It was Amanda, Sarah's best friend. When did you get here? How long have you been listening to our conversation? Do you mean how long have I been standing here? Amanda retorted. Maybe, I replied with a shrug. You shouldn't let them push you around, Amanda said, ignoring my earlier question. I'm sorry, but if you are listening correctly, Amanda, there were three of them against me. Besides, I don't, I don't know how to fight, I finished in my head. Don't what? Sarah asked, raising an eyebrow. I, I don't think it's a good idea for you to be in here. I responded quickly. Avoided her intense gaze. I was internally, internally screaming, trying to keep my composure. It is a miracle I wasn't speaking smoothly, but I was speaking smoothly, considering my heart was pounding. Are you sh trying to t kick us out? Amanda asked indifferently. Sarah was the goody two shoes, while Amanda was the no nonsense type. It was surprising that the two of them were friends giving the contrasting personalities. Bending down to pick up my discarded bag from the corner of the restroom, I finally replied, maybe I just don't want you guys to get caught and punished for something that didn't happen in this bathroom. Relax, no one saw us coming and no one will see us leave. Sarah added <laughs> with a wink. Besides, you could come with us. My dad will be here soon. I don't... I began asserting. Come on, Tom's, Sarah said, using a nickname that made my heart race. You know the school bus already left. But what about Simon? I asked, trying to maintain a serious tone, even though I was elated inside. He can take care of yourself. Trust me, you wouldn't want to know what is done to them. Okay, I said, still feeling crazy, despite the unexpected kindness. After that encounter, we became fast friends and my popularity received a significant boost. Though I still faced bullying behind the scenes, the trio never stopped standing up for me. The day my bullying ceased, even if temporarily, marked the best day of my life. We were in the cafeteria and I had just collected my lunch 
making my way to our table when my foot caught on something, sending me sprawling face first or more accurately, tray first. Laughter erupted throughout the cafeteria and I knew Fred was behind it because he was the loudest. I could feel my cheeks burning with embarrassment as I quickly stood up and brushed crumbs off from my clothes. Somewhere in the recesses of my mind, I thanked the heavens that I had ordered a switch roll instead of spaghetti. It would have been much more immolating. Watch where you are going weekly, Fred shouted, loud enough for everyone to hear, ready to make his escape. That's when Simon grabbed him by the collar, halting his exit. Once again, it was Simon who came to my rescue. But this time, his demeanor was far from playful. His eyes were cold and stern as he stared down Fred. Apologize, Simon ordered, his voice low. And who are you to tell me what to do? Fred challenged, moving closer and crowning his head. It was an amusing sight, considering the palpable tension in the room. I'm a guy who thinks you should do the right thing before walking away from someone you intentionally tripped. By this point, everyone had fallen silent, their eyes fixed on the offending confrontation. And what if I don't? Then whatever happens next is on you. It's just bluffing. One of Fred's friends later identified as John Scott. Look, Simon, or whatever they call you, you have got a pretty face, and I don't want to win it for you. So if it doesn't matter what my face look like, we can either settle this the easy way or take the hard part. Either way, I will give you what? Beat me? Fred taunted and threw a punch at Simon, who swiftly evaded it. Fred's suddenly loss of balance caught him off guard and he found himself flipped over, landing hard on his back. His minors rushed to Simon's aid, failing their arms aimlessly in an attempt to retaliate. But as usual, Simon skillfully dodged every attack, delivering an uppercut to James' jaw and a spinning kick to John. All three were not gone in pains, while everyone in the cafeteria stayed in ill. However, Simon wasn't finished. He approached Fred, who was now crawling, and seized his shirt collar. Apologize now, or you won't like what I'll do next. Simon warned, breathing heavily. I'm sorry, Tommy. Fred groaned, clutching his side. It's okay, I replied, my voice barely more than a whisper. Even though fireworks were going off in my head, I couldn't believe Fred had apologized to me in front of everyone. All it took was a flip. With that, Simon and I returned to our table and continued our lunch. Although I celebrated internally, I knew it, would, it wouldn't be long before Fred came after me again. Our friendship grew stronger and we did almost everything together. A hand around his neck pinned him to the wall. His eyes wide like saucers. All right, I think I should stop there. Okay. I'm, I'm never ready whenever it, it, it's been like, I've been really almost a hundred dollars. I thought maybe have a hundred and I'm yet like the excerpt always ends and I'm like, wait, that's it. <laughs> well, I think I will end the reading here. Okay. No, that's totally up to you. You are the author. It's totally up to you. So, um, so is, so this is, is this the first book in a series or is it standalone? Yeah. Yes. It's a series. It is only the is only Earth Protectors out, or are there more books in the series out? Well, I'm presently working on the second book, on the third, presently. I'm actually working on that. How's it going? So it's, going to be it's going to be released this year. Okay. So I think I'm, I'm knee deep into chapter 14 for the book two, and chapter, and sorry, I'm knee deep into book two, Okay. Into, into chapter fourteen of book two and chapter two of book three. Oh, you so you're writing them at the same time. Yes, yes. Is is that because the characters demanded you do that, or the plot was really intricate and you needed to make sure everything worked out? Well, I usually have an outline for my books, <laughs> so I know what I know when 
book two should end and know what it should end with and where book TV should start from. So it's just like I have um, an outline for the series. So I know where there's always an a break where I should end each book. So I just pick and, it up from there. Okay. And do the characters cooperate with that plan? Not really. <laughs> like <laughs> I think I've <laughs> I have actually written about two chapters this past week. I had to write them again because the characters were actually pointing me in, um, to something else from what I had originally planned. So oh, just wow. like the character, characters have their own voice and they just speak mm -hmm. like the demand what they want at times. It's, it's yeah. always like that. Oh, oh yeah. Every author who's been on here has said that. Um, actually, I think there's only been like a couple of authors who came on here who did not have that problem, but everybody else had the problem that they, they have the plan and the characters don't always want to follow it. And Everybody has their own way of handling that. Yeah. Is it only going to be three books or how many books are you planning to be in the series? For now, I'm planning three books. So now I'm planning for three books, but probably in the future. Okay, initially, Earth Protectors was supposed to be a standalone, but why give it to some better readers? Uh, so I got the idea that turn it into a series because the story was just wider than just a book. So having reading, having finished reading it, the kind of game I did that why not turn it into a series? So, and that was when I started working on the series and why book one was out. I was already, I already had book two and book three filled out. So I knew what the series would be. But so for now, I think it's just going to be three books. But in the future, I never can tell. It could become yeah. six books or more. No, so you, the characters you, decide that. Yep. Mm -hmm. The characters decide that. We just have to go along with the plan. <laughs> yeah. um, were you when uh, when you gave it to beta readers? Were you planning on writing another series, and and then this interfered with that plan? Yeah, I was working on the book two of my first book. Yeah, I have written two books presently, so I was working on book two of my first book, that Shadow Fighter. So when I started getting a lot of responses from like positive response from my beta readers and some readers who had bought the books. Some um, actually sent a direct message to me asking that, would there be a book two? Is it just going to be a standalone? That this should be something much more than just this? So at that point, I knew that, okay, this was the book everyone was looking out for. So I had to like put that on a hold for now. So so when I'm done with the book two of this, then probably I go back into that before releasing book three of Earth Protectors. Oh, wow. That's awesome. But yeah, characters do kind of decide things for us, sadly. We, we don't always get to go with our plans. <laughs> Sarah, anything else you want to say about Earth Protectors? Uh, okay. Or any, any cool yeah, things that you don't get Earth to talk to other people yes. about? <laughs> All right, okay. One thing about Ed Protector was that, okay, it was, I would say, okay, it was actually the first book I wanted to like publish, but then I had to publish Shadow Fighter, and with the storyline of Ed Protectors, I started seeing that people, you know, still not reading. All right, so I said, Ed Protectors was the book I was planning to publish first, but I ended up publishing Shadow Fighter and the book started taking a new turn. I never even expected that Ed Protectors would be a book that people would easily connect to. I just wrote it. I was just like, okay, let me just put this book out. It has been on my system for so long. So let me just put it out. So I never even had this great expectation of people wanting to read more. And someone, yeah, if it actually got in contact with me and actually caught the book. She, she compared the book to the Windows Lightning Thief. Yeah, the book, the Lightning Thief. She said it looks more like, it has a, the vibe of Percy Jackson and Peter Cole's last book, that's I Am Six, I Am Number Four.
Oh, okay. You know, I was getting, I was getting that vibe from it. I, I think I read, I think I read Iron Four. All right. So the turnout from people prompted me to go into the so go into book two and three. So, and I think I'm loving the story much more like than when I started writing it. So it's it's actually one of the best book I have now. Let me just say that. Like one of the best books that's kind of fun. So that, that's all about the book. So I think that's what I can say about Earth Protectors. And it basically connects with young readers too. Like most of my readers, they tend to like tell me about the children loving the books. Like they give it to their child or their children and they can easily connect with it. So, that is, so with Earth Protectors, I think it's going to be something that is going to be big. So that, that's what I'll just say about that. It's every, it's every author's dream that each book becomes something that the world love and would always wish to read more about it. That's just it. Yeah, you never know which book is the one that's going to, you know, catch fire um, and be the book that readers love. You, you don't know. <laughs> we, put, we hope and we put them out there, but we don't know which one is going to be the one. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, that's it, yeah. So one never knows, so one never know. But the aim is just keep on writing and let readers figure you out, so that's it. Yeah, so you said uh, book two, the sequel to Earth Protector should be out sometime by the end of the year? Yes, probably October or November. Okay, and when are you, when do you think book three might be out? Well, book three should be out probably by March or April. So, because I actually want to, I'm actually, I actually want to release the book two to my Facebook. So that should be within January or February. So okay. the book three of Earth Protector, Earth Protector should go in and should be out and April. Yeah, April or May. So that's what I'm planning to do. Okay, that's awesome. I hope I, I mean it it sounds like a great they it sounds like a really great series. I hope it does I hope it catches fire. I hope it does really well for you. Uh, it's awesome to hear that you're getting great feedback from people. I love hearing that. I love hearing that other authors are doing well. It's, that means that we can all do well. <laughs> yeah. So is there anything I, else you wanna say? Uh I just I just wanna say thank you for having me on this platform and it's been great speaking with you. Yeah, and congratulations on your just released book. I think the book series, yeah. I think that. So that's your really, I think I saw that the book series. Wook got yeah. So congratulations on that. Well, thank you for coming oh, on it. Go on. Yeah. So thank you. And thank you to everyone. So that's all I just have to say. Thanks for coming on the podcast and telling us about Earth Protectors. So we hope that you've enjoyed another episode of Fantasy Lore and More. Um, remember to like, subscribe, and follow so that when Samuel comes back with another book, you'll be notified. Thank you so much.